All right, went to go for another ride here. Uh, happened to grab a fuel filter this weekend. So it's just the same cheap see-through one that was kind of on there. However, uh, there was no clamp on this part of the line. So that was definitely sucking some air right there. And then this line is what was run between the pump and the carb. I had to clip the end off because it was crushed and split. Actually, that's uh, that one right there. You can see how deformed it is. And that's because they had the sucker tightened and crunched right on there. That is not the right clamp to use for that, especially something so small. And then the line was too big anyway, and it's just kind of dry and soft. Well, I had some other line here. I cut this piece off because this is hard. The rest of it was soft, so I was able to make a new line there. And then I've got some of these other style clamps that I put on both ends. Now it's not pulling off of either end and that's clamped down properly. So now we should have no, oh, I guess there was a supposed to be a clamp on there. It just fell down. Well, it definitely wasn't tight. So uh, that should help. Maybe I won't be uh, running out of fuel for some reason after I drive it around for 20 minutes. After changing this fuel line around yesterday, kind of see the fuel level in there. And I was noticing that if you went over a bunch of bumps or kind of turned a tight radius quickly, uh, it would sputter and die and there'd be almost no fuel in there. So I'm wondering if I have a pickup issue going on where, oh yeah, well, based on this uh, interestingly shaped gas tank there, uh, I'm wondering if the pickup line doesn't actually get all the way down to the sump. And if we're turning one way or the other, it's starting to suck a little bit of air. So I might have to drop the tank to figure that out. But for now, um, I would like to get this intake hooked up. And because we're at about an inch, it might even be a little bit smaller than an inch of carburetor size versus a two and a half inch hose coming in, I'm gonna have to build an adapter. So my plan for building an adapter is I'll start with a flat piece, make the flange out of it. Uh, I have a smaller piece of tube that the uh, inside is fairly close to the opening on the carburetor. Uh, this might be a little bit big, but it's going to be a heck of a lot better than nothing at all. And then I have this uh, exhaust connector that starts out two and a half. I did check this fits the rubber hose real nice. And just to make it fit, I might have to cut it down a little bit to length, but my plan is I'm just going to notch some triangles out of here so I can compress it down until it lines up with this one and weld everything together. All right, I'm gonna start with the flange. So I got a little bit of a bend on this plate that I grabbed. I'm gonna go diagonally with the bolt pattern so I'll keep it a little bit flatter and I just won't have to worry about that. I started out by grabbing a center point. So that'll be my opening for the carburetor. I know my bolt spacing is uh, inch and nine sixteenths roughly. Uh, so I wanted the center point and then I just went half the distance minus a few thou just for the inaccuracies of using the calipers to sit in the hole and scribe a line. And then I just scribed a line straight across to get my bolt locations. <laughs>
wondering or thinking that this looks like shit. And you're right. <laughs> Is it perfect? No, obviously not. Uh, could it be better? Yes. Is it functional? Absolutely. Pro tip, clean all the acorns out of your intake tube before you put it on too. This one was full of stuff. All right, this solid rod is the fuel tank pickup. So obviously uh, that's not leaking. The solder up here looks like it's pretty good yet. So I don't think that's how I'm getting air in the system. So. I don't see anything wrong with the fuel line, but just to be safe, I'll throw some new line on it all the way down to the fuel pump and see if that makes it any better. I've jumped into doing these motor mounts just because no need to have you guys all, gals all watch me struggle here. So the factory ones are just riveted in. So I was able to take all the motor mounts out and move the engine around enough to get access. Any ones that I couldn't drill, at least semi close to straight, have just been grinding the top of the heads off and then knocking out what's left of the rivet with a punch and hammer. And I'll just be putting them back in with a rivet as well, which is just, you know, as long as I have enough access space here, I can get the rivet gun in there and be able to put some new rivets in. Not trying to be too fancy about it, just this is something you didn't need to watch 20 minutes of me struggling with to get done, but I'm getting it done. Spent a little time trying to decide where I wanted to put these. Originally, I was thinking back here inside the wheel well, but after looking at just you know how kind of beat up and bent that area is, it's probably not the best place to put them. So I decided that uh, right up here, underneath, would be a pretty safe place. It's actually relatively clean up there. So to prep the surface, I wire brushed in there as much as I could reach. And then I took this rag with uh, acetone on it. And as you can see, I was getting some pretty heavy deposits off of there before it was getting clean. And then this was kind of like my final pass on both sides. It may not be completely perfect, but as soon as that acetone dries, it should be a very clean surface that should make this uh, double-sided tape stick really well. Now these do have a good length of wire, so I know I can make it up to the switch on the dash, or if I want to hook them up to a separate switch, maybe I'll do that. But I'm going to aim the wires both towards the center, because this side could go either way, but if I put it on with the wire to the far side, I'm probably going to run out of wire before I get back to the center of the dash. So the left-hand side will be this way in the chassis and the right hand side will be that way. That way I can get the wires uh, looped together as quickly as possible and just run them together up through any of the panels that I need to. As you can see there, that's where the front ones ended up, right on the back side of the main panel and then just above the stiffening strip. Uh, it's the same on both sides, just goes towards the center. And here's where I put them on the back. I'm just going kind of tucked on the side panel there. Now I've gone and drilled a few holes here. And I'm going to use that to put just enough slack in this wire so that it doesn't rub. And then it'll zip tie it and hide it up in place there. And then I can tuck it up in behind here the whole way and just zip tie it a few places. The wire will be nice and tucked. <coughs> 
And then the wire will come out here. I'm probably gonna have enough length to get to center with both LEDs. So I'll probably just uh, splice into the tail lights somewhere in the center here. Just to simplify it, make sure I got enough length of wire and Scored this rear seat today for 150 bucks. It ain't perfect, but what is hopefully going to be perfect is it should be an exact fit for this golf cart. Uh, we'll see how the mounting lines up and whether or not I gotta do something different with the roof. I would like to keep the roof. Uh, I'm guessing this seat's gonna mean the roof can't stay, but you know, we can cut and weld some things. So we'll we'll see how much work it's gonna be. It'd just be cool to be able to have it uh, seat four people rather than just two or being really cramped with three, so. I did some quick measurements to kind of see where this thing would end up positioned. Uh, doesn't line up with the holes and then I'm realizing that it doesn't uh, have the seat flip up at all. So this must be have been meant for an electric version. But I'm looking at where basically the back side of these seat pads needs to land with the big uprights for holding the roof. And in order to work around that and get this distance, I did a little bit of measuring. Which puts it right around 25 inches from this big support that comes up here out to just past. But then with the way that the footrest of stuff drops down, it's basically gonna be right on top of this light. So the lights are probably gonna have to move. And then I'm gonna have to figure out some kind of a, either a quick release system so we can put gas in it because the gas filler is there. Um, I see there's some square tube and stuff down on the bottom, but I'm also gonna have to like space it up above this a little bit versus just going straight on top. So I'll need some kind of a riser. So I'm thinking maybe I can come up with some kind of a riser where it's good. it can either slide on and off quick, or it could be something where you got some kind of quick release, or if I decide to um, make more of a permanent mount down here. I could just make the whole thing pivot up. But we will have to remove the roof and the rear supports will probably have to get some kind of redesign in order to make it work. However, I am a little concerned about with the seat being up another couple inches there, the head clearance to the top. But we'll see how that comes out. After going through a bunch of different scenarios on how to mount the seat, came up with, uh, actually, I'm pretty shocked how simple it was. I eventually realized that these were angled to match up with the back bumper area. And I was thinking, oh, I can have something that goes inside of here to like slip on and pin it. And then I kind of set it in place especially after I added this bar in here to stiffen it all up, that made it way easier to kind of mock up. And it made sure that each side was bent the same, into the same location, because otherwise it didn't match up. As you can see on the lower one, that's got a pretty hefty bend in it, but that's because it's bent on the angle iron. So that was actually just sitting against this bottom plate and I was able to actually just sit on the seat myself without it feeling like it was going to fall off or go anywhere. So I'm wondering if the edge 
was just meant to butt up against here anyway and it just needed to be attached up top. After that, I was trying to decide how to tie into these because of strength and blah, 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 blah. And then realized that, oh, hey, there's a second layer under here. And notice that, oh, it has a steel reinforcement off of the frame on both sides in order to support something that's heavier like that. So that made a lot more sense. And then I just laid it up so that it was pinch tight against the back. I had a hole to drill. It didn't match up with these ones, so I don't know. That kind of looks like a bit of a home-built structure there compared to uh, it being a factory thing, especially with that being like aluminum diamond plate. I don't know. So it's just been repaired a few times. I'm guessing these are not the original. That's why they didn't match up because they're not even the same length. But I just needed a way to put it on and be able to remove it super easy. And then I remembered, oh, I have some hood pins. So that's all I did is just drilled through, adjusted the hood pin height. And then I wanted to isolate it and have it above a little bit. And I had these leftover bump stops off of the Viking shocks on the car. And just so happens to be that that opening it's on there nice and snug. So now I can just set the seat in place, push it down a little bit, stick a pin in it, and it stays. And I can step on it, climb up, all that. And I added these just for a little bit of extra support because otherwise it would move ever so slightly here and was kind of wedging in between here and getting stuck. So I just wanted to give it a little extra support. That's what the two tabs are for. And now it's super easy to put on and take off. Works pretty good, I'd say. And it's nice and easy to remove. That way I can get to the gas tank for Phillips. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with this came out. I was kind of dreading this project that I was going to get super overcomplicated because I wasn't quite sure how it mounted. And then I think I just stumbled into how it originally was. Even though none of the bullet holes lined up, this makes sense. And I know I got enough support back here. It's Shouldn't have a problem with anything falling off or getting damaged or whatever with multiple people on it, so it should be fun. All right, I got the roof partially put back on because I do want to make it work, even though it uh, completely messes up here with the back seat. However, I uh, got some one inch square aluminum to modify these with, and then uh, it turns to find out these are steel. But, I was trying to figure out flipping them around or however it could, like maybe I could drop them down in the center and then make a crossbar, but being as the handles and stuff are on the outside and if anybody ever decides to use them, it really should have it support from the outside. But I'm looking at, this might be easiest if I flip it over. And then the base here can sit right on that reinforced plate. But because the back seat is removable and has to come up, I will have to cut it and extend it in this first section. So I'll just get some one inch square steel and then I can just cut that, extend it, you know, weld it, grind it out. You won't even tell it's been modified. And then that'll get me up to about the height I need to. I do need to tip this roof up about one to two inches in the back just to make sure there's adequate head clearance for anybody riding in the back so you're not bumping and banging your head. And then I can get another chunk and then I'll just build a cross brace and then come forward a couple inches here, maybe five, six inches. And then these can sit nice and vertical. It will support the roof really well. 
and it shouldn't have much problem there. But I don't have that material yet, so that's what I'll end up doing. The plan changed a little. Instead of the three inches I was talking about there, I actually added a full six inches. So a spot, a section of tube welded there. Um, I will be drilling a hole and mounting right through that plate as I planned. But then as we come up, you can see the difference between the other bar. What I ended up doing was when I cut it off, I turned it 90 degrees so that it would kick back a little bit and go up. And then I made a new piece that came off the roof and just there, cut a notch in it, angled it down. And then welded it on. This also was to increase the roof height a bit in the back. You can see it's got a little bit of rake to it now. And that is so that we have plenty of head clearance. So now an adult should be able to sit back here and we've got room. And for sitting in the front, I've got no elbow problems, anything going on here that I otherwise would have. There's nothing, you know, directly behind. Like, I feel like I ended up with that bar in a good spot where it's not going to interfere with a front seat passenger or rear seat passenger. This is how I'm jigging up the modifications. It's nice that this is all square tube, and then I had... Um, an extra piece of square tube that I got. Thought I was gonna need it, but actually it's still gonna be a full chunk, I just needed one. But it works out great for making a partial jig to keep all this stuff straight. So I just pick a spot to cut the original one, add in the six inch piece, turn the upper section, used to be the lower section, 90 degrees, make sure that I have uh, the correct side because they are offset differently side to side, which is how I got it set up. Now I'll be able to put a full weld across here before letting it cool down a little bit and flipping it and welding on a few other places. And because I've got it clamped to the table separately from clamped to the parts, I'll be able to loosen it up from the table while still keeping it clamped to the bar for welding two more sides. And then I only have to remove the square tube that I'm using as a jig to make the final side welded. This will be the top piece that gets a hole drilled through here to support the roof. Uh, I just used that angle. I had a square that I used to make sure it was square to this on the other one and then I cut it off so that's actually just gonna reuse that angle. It'll be square also and I did check this one before I welded it. This one was just a straight section, cut a triangle out of it, bend it, and weld it back up. So if that's the same as the other one, it'll line up with the top of the hole, kind of a thing. But I'll get this welded up, shoot some paint on it, let it dry, and get assembled on the cart. Here we are, the roof is reattached and we've got extra seating. Thing came out pretty good, we got just a little bit of rake in the roof. If you're noticing that that passenger side rear corner is a little bit high, I noticed that too, but it's because the driver's front is a bit low. 
So the whole cart's leaning. So it's just a matter of be whether or not I want to be worried about that, but it came out nice. We're gonna be able to have a little bit of uh, rain and shade protection. Or rather, protection from the rain and the sun. But yeah, this should be fun. I'd say this golf cart's getting pretty close to finished. Uh, I have uh, just like reattaching the tail lights. I made some brackets. They're gonna get mounted off the side of the frame back there, but. Other than that, I mean, that's a pretty simple job left to do. It's been running pretty good. I did pull the fuel pump off the other day and kind of put a little bit of gasket maker on the gaskets there in case it was leaking a little bit past. That seems to have helped with the fueling issue. Uh, beyond that, maybe this thing could use a set of rings. I don't know, it seems to start better in reverse than it does forward, but once it gets going, it's pretty good. And I mean, we've been able to cruise around for a half hour or more at a time now. And I don't know, we're just pretty fun thing to do. We pile the family on here and go for a rip. So it uh, should be fun, especially next year with getting the Cutlass back together and ready to hit the racetrack next year. We'll be able to have, bring this with in the enclosed trailer because we should have enough room for it without any issue and uh, we'll have a pit vehicle instead of having to walk everywhere, especially in big tracks like Road America and Brainerd where there's so far to go between the different spots. So, but Hope you enjoyed coming along on this uh, video series. Uh, probably not going to do a whole lot more with this thing cause unless we get into some more major repairs or upgrades at some point in the future. but. For now, it runs. We're going to enjoy it and have a good time.